Hal Laboratory have worked on some fantastic, complex games in their storied history. The Lolo series, the Mother series, the Super NES version of SimCity, the Pokemon Stadium games, Shigesato Itoi's number one bass fishing, hell they even made a Ghostbusters 2 game where you can play as Lewis. So many wonderfully complex titles, but what are they best remembered for? A circle with a face and limbs. And in at least three games, he doesn't even have those. Well, the dog with eggs, and I've yet to see a decent explanation of that, are back to impart character to another simple shape, and in doing so, create another deceptively creative game. Which, much like the genesis of Kirby, is in Monocro. Box Boy was a box. I mean, his name is QB. Despite the fact that he's actually a square and never asked kids to become magical girls. You know, I thought I had something going there, but I'll spare you the attempt to salvage this wreck. Whatever you call him, he's capable of a singularly unique power. The ability to spawn more boxes via mitosis and then use those as platforms, throw them at triggers, or travel along the line from place to place. And as is the trademark of Nintendo and their associated developers, this simple mechanic is bowed, flexed, and adapted into more than 20 worlds, each with a half dozen stages or more, and then there's some time attack stages, and interspersed in there are a couple friends and some actual plot. Plot with no dialogue or color. And somehow it still works. It's likely because the game is simple enough to convey everything it needs to convey with just the occasional background billboard demonstrating a key concept, and then using the stage itself to reinforce the rudiment. The first level of each world throws up a new twist on the Make Boxes theme, then over the course of the next six or so that twist gets retwisted, re-retwisted, and kicked up notches unknown to mankind, as Emerald would say. For what it's worth, there's not much of a penalty for failure, you simply respawn back at the latest checkpoint. That's good, because instead of just stopping down and puzzling out a solution, you're encouraged to jump out and experiment with a couple different things, learning by trial and error instead of bringing the gameplay to a screeching halt. However, the downside to wasting too much time, and boxes, is that you risk losing your crowns. Scattered throughout each stage are one or more crowns, which can be collected as bonus objectives, but only if you're still under par for that course. While the game itself isn't terribly difficult per se, some of these crowns will have you scratching your head. Your reward for such obsessive collection is more medals, which can be spent in the in-game store to unlock the aforementioned score and time attack modes, a music player, hint guides that demonstrate some of the more complex techniques, and yes, even costumes. Sure, Kyuubi's just a box with eyes and feet, but now he's a freaking superhero. That's some impressive cape physics for a 2D monochrome box-centric game. Ultimately, Box Boy, in all caps with a bang, is the kind of game that every developer wants to produce. A breath of fresh air, a change of pace from any potential typecasting. The kind of game that allows some mechanic that would otherwise be absorbed into a big famous franchise to stand on its own. Even if it means giving a bare bones visual presentation and a simple, if immensely catchy, soundtrack. Still, there's quite a lot of replay value here in collecting all the crowns and unlocking everything in the shop. I also wouldn't be surprised if the game finds a following amongst speedrunners, as the bare-bones simplicity makes it a nice introduction to root optimization. I guess this means Hal's next game is going to be about a sentient triangle then. Maybe a game where you get to play as a single spike, what leaves the floor or ceiling and goes off to find its destiny, while well, puncturing protagonists along the way. If it's anything as good as Box Boy, I'd play it. <laughs> 